Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing the Love Dare Marriage Evaluation. This is the evaluation after you do the 40 day challenge with uh, Stephen and Alex Kendrick's Love, The Love Dare book or challenge I guess you can say. Um, it's, it's actually the very same one that I did before I take it but then this is just how I'm doing now after I went through the, all the 40 day dare. This is, this dare is something that you can just take over and over again. And it is something that you can do alone or you can do with your spouse so you can match up your answers with their perceptions. Your score history will also appear on the screen of every time you take it, you'll see your, it gives you a score and it will be on the first page. Um, so you can always go back and see how you're doing. And it also mentions not to tackle improvements in all seven areas at the same time or all at once. Choose to focus just on just one this week and then you'll lead your heart to grow in that area or in that di direction. You just can see what you can learn and you can always just keep growing in love. Okay, now I'm going to pull up on my phone and um, I have it saved to my phone the my test and so you can see where I need improvement and where I'm doing well. Okay, here's my marriage evaluation. After taking the Love Dare Challenge after the 40 days, I retook the evaluation and my score is now at 557. All the categories are attention, acceptance, affirmation, affection, allowing, apology, and abiding. We will go into deeper explanation with these later. And then you, they keep your previous results. Um, when I bought the book, I took the evaluation and I got a 457. Then after being married for a little bit longer, I took the Love Dare, before I took the Love Dare challenge, um, it went down to 328, but after completing the challenge, I retook the evaluation and it got up to 557. I've been married for four years and 316 days. We have our five year anniversary in 61 days. I mean, 51 days. Okay, attention. Um, it was a 93 out of 143. That means it's a likely weak, uh, likely strength. The following days in the Love Dare will help you solidify this area as a strength. Days 3, 4, 18, 30, and 31. Some helpful verses for you to look up and keep paying attention to are Philippians 2, 4, James 1, 19 through 20, Proverbs 24, 3 through 4, and Ephesians 5, 33. Next is acceptance, and it is 71 out of 143, which means that this is a likely weakness for me. It is something I need to work on. And it's days 1, 6, 10, 17, 27, 37, 39. Perhaps your wife or husband says that they often feel the weight of your disapproval, the constant pressure for you to change. But realize that you too are an un imperfect person and need of their understanding, patience, and frequent forgiveness to approve and acceptance you must battle against these tendencies to be overly and quickly critical. Try to put yourself in your spouse's shoes. Give them permission to be human and make mistakes. Check your expectations. Are they fair and realistic? What is truly motivating them? The goal is to love your spouse unconditionally, praising them often, allowing them to fail, 
remain patient until they see the need for change themselves and by an encourager, not an attacker. Verses Colossians 3, 12 through 13, Proverbs 17, 9, 1 Thessalonians 5, 11, and 1 John 4, 18. Okay, next is affirmation. And it's a 93 through 143, and this is a likely strength for me. And it is days 7, 11, 15, 23, 34. And it's verses Ephesians 4, 29, Philippians 4, 8, Romans 12, 10, and 2 Thessalonians 1, 4. Next is affection, and it is a 50 out of 143, which means it's a likely weakness, and the days are 2, 9, 14, 22, 24, and 32. Many of the things that hamper your ability to be tender and affectionate with each other came from the various hurts you, we've endured from childhood, from others, from earlier days in our marriage, but even by our nature for ex experience, you're not the touchy-feely type. You can still let love motivate you to be kind, to be helpful, to overcome any obstacles to affection by knowing what your spouse needs and enjoys from you. As the love dare explained, it's all about leading your heart rather than about following your heart, choosing to delight in your one and only. And the verses to go along this are First Thessalonians three twelve, Proverbs five eighteen through twenty one, Hebrews thirteen four, and First Corinthians seven three. Next is allowing, and I got a 107 out of 143, which means the likely strength for me. And the days are 8, 12, 16, 28, and 38. And the verses include Romans 12, 15, Genesis 2, 18, Galatians 6, 2, and 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4. Next is Apology, and it's 64, I got 64 of 143, which is a likely weakness for me, and it's days 5, 13, 25, 26, 35, and 40. Prideful people do not apologize, and stubborn pride in marriage is toxic. Twice in the movie Love Story, this now classic line was voiced by a character, Love means never having to say you're sorry. That may be the worst and most untrue line ever spoken in cinematic history because authentic love requires humility and any authentic love will humble itself to apologize for a single mistake, a hurtful word, or demeaning deed. Pride makes excuses for our behavior, defends and justifies it, and shifts the blame for it elsewhere. But the health of your marriage deepens on your willingness to love first out of your own faults and take full responsibility for your own unloving words and actions. Genuine apologies break down walls and open doors to forgiveness and reconciliation. The movie line should have been, love means never buying unwilling being unwilling to say you're sorry, and that's verses first John one eight, Romans twelve, eighteen, Matthew eighteen, twenty one to twenty two, and James five sixteen. The last one is abiding, and I got a seventy nine of one hundred forty three, which is a likely weakness, and this one actually surprised me that it was a weakness for me. But the days are 19, 20, 21, 29, and 36. Not every marriage starts out with either partner interested in God. Maybe that was you, not thinking you needed him or his guidance to make your marriage work. 
You may have also grown to believe that if your wife or husband doesn't cooperate with you and you reciprocate and reciprocate life for them, there is not much point in keeping this marriage going. But God can change your motivation for marriage. He can give you a love that transcends your circumstances and continues on even when you don't feel like it. It starts with surrendering your life to Him, staying dependent on Him every single day, and choosing to love solely in order to please him even if your spouse isn't pleased with you at the moment and that's verses first john 4 7 psalms 30 7 4 and ephesians 3 16 through 19 and philippians 4 6 through 7 okay so that is my test and you, as you saw that there's a couple, few things that i can still be working on i'll always will be working on all of those because there's room room for improvement in every area and it's just smart to, to continue to just try to improve on your marriage so if you decide to do this there and challenge please let me know down in the comments and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell so you never miss any of our videos. And oh, and just to go ahead and just say, if you decide to do this dare, and cha dare challenge, whatever you want to call it, um, for your marriage, I promise you that you will not regret it. Alright, I'll see y'all in the next video. Alright, bye.